Hello and welcome. In order to get started with Audacity, you'll need to go to your favorite search engine and you'll want to type in Audacity. And typically, you're going to see a search result that will look like one where you're going to see the website audacityteam.org. If you find that website, you are going to want to go there. As of the recording of this video, you're going to see Audacity version 3 or above. And you can determine the most recent release and what's involved in that release by clicking the release notes button. Now Audacity is free and open source, so there is no cost involved. All you'll need to do is to download Audacity to your personal computer. And Audacity is available for Windows, Mac, Linux, and other sources. Now according to Audacity, what you can do is to record with it. You can import and export files. You can determine what the sound quality of the audio file that you're creating. Audacity has plugins for specialty creation. You'll be able to use Audacity for editing as well as effects, accessibility, and analysis. So to start the process with Audacity, you'll go to the system that you have and then you'll want to download Audacity to your hard drive. Now for the sake of this course, we're going to look at the Windows version of Audacity. Now what we'll now do is to go through the install process. But before we do that, we do want to address a concern amongst previous users that Audacity may be spyware. And we will do that in the next video before we go through the install process. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Now, after the recording of this video, there is concern that Audacity may be spyware. And what you'll want to do is to go to your favorite search engine and you'll want to type in Audacity Team and then Spyware to determine if you find this to be true. There are specific articles inside of the Audacity form. There are also articles inside of trade journals that address technology. You'll want to go to the source that you trust in order to determine if you find Audacity to be spyware. Now there is evidence and opinion to the contrary to the concern that Audacity is spyware, but again, you are going to want to make sure if the definition fits what you want and what you are comfortable with. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Once you have Audacity on your hard drive, you can then begin the install process. Once you download and open the install file, you will then click Next. You want to read through the disclosure, and you'll see various links that you do want to make sure that you read and understand. Once you've done that, you can then click Next. You will then choose a place for Audacity to install, and then you'll click Next and Audacity will start the install process. You'll then see other links for you to learn more about the most recent release of Audacity, as well as to be able to visit the user forum to determine solutions that may not be outlined in the software. Once you have installed Audacity, you'll typically get a pop-up message about updates. Now, because there was a previous version of Audacity on the personal computer where we are installing the most recent release, we received a message stating that there is a plugin that will not be configured with the new Audacity. What we're going to need to do is to go to the preferences area and the libraries in order to reconfigure that plugin. Once you have the interface, you can then expand it to fit your screen. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now, if you go back to the Audacity page, you're going to see that there are going to be areas where you can download for your specific system. Now, in this course, we're looking at the Windows system, but the process is the same with Mac and Linux. What you're going to notice on this page, if you scroll down past the downloads, is you're going to see optional downloads. And you're going to want to pay attention to two things in particular. One, the FFmpeg import export library. And again, you may have noticed that in a previous video, if you had a previous version installed that you'll need to make sure that this library is operational in the new software. What you can do is you can install the FFmpeg from this download page inside of Audacity. However, what you can also do if you had a previous version is to go to edit, then preferences. Once you open up edit and preferences, you're going to go to this libraries. What you're then going to see is you're going to see that there's an FFmpeg library. Now, because we had the error message, FFmpeg library was not found, we're going to click this download button. And that's going to take you back to the download page. So we're going to go to this download page for FFmpeg, and we are going to install the FFmpeg library. 
you are going to see a license agreement which you are going to want to read. Once you have read it, you will then click Accept. You will then install the FFmpeg library. You'll then click Finish to exit the setup. You'll then need to come back to edit your preferences. You'll then want to locate the library where you installed it when you downloaded the software. Typically, Audacity will tell you that it's located your valid MPEG libraries. You can choose to install them manually or you can just click No in order for Audacity to complete the process. Okay, so with that, thanks and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Also, on your download page for your particular operating system, you're also going to see optional plugins. Now, in this case, we're going to click on the optional plugins for Windows. You're going to see plugin formats that are supported by Audacity, and you're going to see them here in this area. And you're going to also see popular plugins. Now, as of the recording of this video, you're going to see here that there is a plugin that will check to see if an audiobook is going to comply with Amazon ACX. You can download that plugin by clicking this button. And you'll be able to look at the details of this particular plugin. Now, if you have previously installed Audacity on your personal computer, you're going to want to take a look at this article on FFmpeg on the Audacity site. And in the previous video, FFmpeg has already been installed. But one of the things you're going to want to note is that in previous versions, you need to have a specific element as part of your Audacity in order to export MP3 files. That capacity is now part of Windows and Mac OS installations of Audacity. So again, now if you've not installed FFmpeg according to the previous video, you can now do that here from this page also. Okay, with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now, once you've connected the mic that you're going to use with your system, you're going to want to select that mic in Audacity here in this area. And so what we're going to do here is we're going to go to the drop down menu. And what you're going to see are all the mic connections for your personal computer. You are then going to want to select the one that you're going to use. Now, when you select the microphone, you're going to notice here on the website menu that there are several input systems. The default setting is going to be multimedia events. It's going to be primarily for Windows based systems. Now, if you have problems with your recording, you can always change these input processes. However, you can safely, if you're using a Windows computer, leave the default setting, which is Multimedia Events, or MME. What we're going to do first is we're going to test our microphone connection. And to do that, we're just going to hit this red record button, and we're going to record our voice. What we mainly want to see here is that our mic is connected and producing audio inside of Audacity. So we're going to click this button. We're then going to continue speaking into this area. And then we're going to stop the process. Once we stop the process, what we can do is we can pull the cursor all the way back to the beginning. And we can do that by clicking this button. That'll take us all the way back to the beginning. We're going to make sure that the speakers are on so that we can hear them. And then we're going to play our recording in order to test it. So we can confirm that our microphone is working and it is producing audio through our system into Audacity. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now, once you listen to your recording, you'll be able to determine how loud your microphone is coming into your personal computer. And you have control over the volume inside of Audacity. If you look to your toolbar, you're going to find that you have control over your recording volume. Now, you will be able to control the input from these controls. And so if you slide the control back along this line, you're going to notice that the volume is going to go up and down in terms of how you're going to be recording. And you can monitor the input here in this section as it goes in and out of Audacity. It could be that you don't have a lot of room in order to adjust it down. And the same thing is going to be true with your playback volume. You want your playback volume to be at the level at which you believe your customer will be listening to it. And once you've made the adjustment, what you can do is you can click here. You can begin to monitor your Audacity system. And then you can click the record button and you can begin recording your voice with your new volume. And once you determine the volume, you'll then be able to figure out how you want your recording to be. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. 
Welcome back. Now it's possible you may want to capture the audio from a source that's coming through your personal computer. For example, you may want to capture the audio from a webinar, you may want to capture the audio from a specific live video, and you can use Audacity in order to do it. What you're going to do here in Audacity, if you're using the Multimedia Events process, you're going to switch to Windows WAS API. You're going to see the change. And what's going to happen then is you want to change the input into Audacity. And what you're going to do is you're going to make it so that the input is actually going to be the same source that will be playing through your speakers. And so you're going to notice here that you have more choices in terms of your input. You're going to choose the input that is actually your speaker output to play into Audacity. And you're going to see the words loop back here and that's going to be an indicator that the sound is going to be coming from the same thing that will be coming from your speakers. So that you can visually see what's actually going to happen. We're going to play the file and then we're going to click on the record button so that you can then see the sound coming from this actual video. Hello and welcome. You're now looking at Shopify.com and Shopify is an e-commerce platform that allows you to build in order to sell products to individuals that want to purchase. So what you'll see now here is the audio that has played through our personal computer but has been captured to Audacity which we can then use as a recording for our purposes. Okay, so with that, thanks and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. What we can do in order to work with an audio is we can import it into Audacity. And we can do that by going to this file command we can then go to this import command and what you'll notice here is that we can import an audio file, we can import labels, a MIDI file or raw data. We're going to import an audio file. You'll then see the audio on one specific track. This file then is ready for you to work with it if you want to go through an editing process or you want to add the effects that Audacity gives you access to. We can undo this function by going to this edit command and going to undo import. We can also import the audio from an mp4 file. And to do that we can go to this file command. We can then go to this import command. In this case we're going to open a video file or an mp4 file. We're going to click open. What you're going to notice then is that Audacity will strip the audio from that file and place the audio into your Audacity program so that you can use it and edit it and provide effects to it. Now you're looking at the audio that will play on one track. What you can also do is you can import additional audio that will play along with the track that you have inside of Audacity. So for example, if we were to go to this file command and we were to import audio, and this time we're going to look for an audio music file. And so basically what you do when you add on a second track, you'll be producing an audio with spoken word here on the top track and then music here on the bottom track. And so you can continue to import files that you want to be part of your final production here in this area. Once you have tracks you'll begin to work with, you'll want to be aware of basic file operations and we will do that in the next video. Okay, so with that, thanks and I will see you in the next video. Welcome back. As you begin to add and work with a specific set of content inside of Audacity, you're going to want to save your progress. In order to do that, you're going to go to this file area and you're going to save this as a project. You'll notice here that your project has a default name. Now what you can do is you can name it what you want it to be. Audacity will give you a warning that you are not recreating an audio file at this time. You're just creating a project where your Audacity work is going to be saved. You're going to notice here that you're saving as an AUP project file and you'll see that here. What we're going to do here is we're going to save it. If we want to write in a new name for our project file we can do it. We're now going to click save and you'll notice your files inside of the directory that you set up. So for example if you were to import another music file into this area you then have a third element as part of a new project. So what you could do is you could go to this file area, you could save this as an entirely new project. So you're going to click save project as. And so basically as you continue to make changes, you're going to create a new file and you're going to save it. 
or you can just continue to mark your progress within one specific project file. Now, assuming that you close this project file, you'll notice here that Audacity remains open, but the project file that you had is no longer there. You can go to this file area. What you can do is you can open it using this open command, or you can use this recent files tab in order to open the file that you just recently saved. And when you open the file, you'll see the elements that you were working with before you saved it. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Once you have your work that you have completed inside of a specific project, you can then produce that project as an audio file. So, for example, if you go to this file area, what you're going to do here is you're going to go to the export command. And you're going to want to decide on which file format you're going to use in order to export the file. Now, what Audacity is going to do is produce the entire file as you have it laid out on the timeline. So, what we're going to do here is we're going to export the entire project as an MP3 file. And we're going to save it as an MP3 file. You're going to notice here that we can save this file as other formats. You're going to see those other formats here in this area in this drop down button. What we're going to do now is we're going to click save and we're going to save the project now and produce it as an MP3 file. Now, Audacity is going to give us a warning that our tracks are going to mix down and export it as one stereo file. We're going to click OK. What you can then do is you can add in metadata for your specific file. We're going to skip that part and we're now going to click OK. And then the project is then produced as an MP3 file. And you're then going to see your new file inside of your directory. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now, it's possible that when you listen to your recording that you find that there is some kind of background noise that you want to remove from your recording. And you can do that inside of Audacity. What you're going to do is you're going to find a section with that background noise in it. We can expand the timeline, and we can assume that we have found the area where the background noise occurs. And so we're going to select that specific section of our recording. What we're then going to do is to go to Effect. We're then going to go to Noise Reduction. What we're then going to do is we're going to get the noise profile. Audacity is going to collect a noise profile for us so that we can remove it from the entire recording. What we're then going to do is determine where in the recording we want to remove the noise. So in this case, we're going to shrink the size of our recording and we're going to select the entire recording. We've now selected the entire recording. We're going to go to Effect. We're now going to go back to Noise Reduction. Now you can preview the file by clicking this button as to how it's going to sound with the noise reduced. If you want to hear the actual sound that will be removed, you can toggle and click Residue. We're going to click back on Reduce. And assuming that you have previewed your file, we're then going to click OK. And Audacity will then do the noise reduction from our recording. What you will then want to do is you want to save your new project file. And you will then click Save. Audacity will then save your recording. In order to export and create the new file, you're then going to go to your file area. You will then go to export. You will then export in the format that you want it to be. In this case, we're going to select MP3 and we're then going to click save. Audacity will then show us the metadata. And if we choose not to add metadata, we're then going to click OK. And then Audacity will produce our new file that has been edited with the noise removed. OK, so with that, thanks and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. When you are listening to your final recording, even after editing, you may discover that you hear clicks and pops inside of the recording. And you can work to fix these things inside of Audacity. And basically, we want to go through the entire recording and we want to remove any clicks and pops from the recording. So we're going to select the entire recording. And what we're now going to do is we're going to go to the effect area. We are then going to go to click removal. Now, in most cases, the default setting will work to remove the clicks that can be removed from a recording. Now, what you can do is you can listen to the preview 
And if you determine that the preview isn't quite what you want, you can make adjustments to the default settings. Once you have your click removal profile that you want, you can then click OK. Now in some cases, what you may see from Audacity is that there aren't any clicks and pops inside of a recording and that their algorithm actually will not do anything to the recording. And that is the case with the one that we are looking to. And when that is the case, Audacity will give you the error message that says that the algorithm is ineffective on this particular audio. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now, whenever you're going to edit out a certain portion of the audio, it's fairly straightforward as to how you're going to use the tools in Audacity to do that. For example, you determine there's a place inside of your audio that you feel needs to be removed. You will place your cursor there. What you'll then do is you will then select part of that audio and you will then cut out that part of the audio. And you'll see then that that part of the audio is then going to be removed. You can then listen to your changes by clicking the play button. Now it's possible that you may not like the change that you made. And if that's the case, you're going to go to the edit area. You're then going to go to the undo cut. That's going to restore the audio to where it was before you got started. And of course, anytime you make changes, the best thing to do when you make changes is to save your changes as a new project file. And in some cases, because of the speed or the cadence at which the audio is created, you may not be able to cut out the audio in order to preserve continuity. If that's the case, what you're going to do is you're going to place your cursor on the area that you need to have silent. And you're then going to select that area. What you're going to do is you're going to go to your toolbar and you're going to see an area here that says silence audio selection. You're going to click that area and basically what you've done here is you have created an area where there will be no sound in the audio. And of course if you don't like that particular selection once you have previewed it by clicking the play button what you can do is you can go to the edit button you can then click this link that says undo silence. That will remove the silence and then your sound will be back in the area in which it was. So you do have options in order to remove existing audio from a recording. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now, Audacity does have a workaround when you want to remove a voice from specific audio that has music along with it. Now, Audacity states openly that there is no reliable way of separating vocals from a specific audio file even with these tools. So what we're going to do is we're going to import a file with both vocals as well as music. And our file is now imported. So what we're going to do is we're going to select the portion of the audio where we want to separate out the vocals and the music. We're then going to go to the effects area we are then going to go to this area that says vocal reduction and isolation. We're then going to select a specific plugin. We can then choose to where we're going to remove the vocals to. And you'll see a drop down arrow and you'll see all of the choices that we have available to us in order to begin working with this file. You're going to choose the one which best reflects your goals for the project. And you're going to click on that goal. What you're then going to do is you're then going to click the preview button so you can listen to the file as it will then be. Once you've chosen the effect that you want, you are then going to click OK. And then Audacity will recreate the file. What you will then do is to save the new project file. And you will then click and save the new project. And you can begin to work with this file in order to get the recording to be exactly what you want by making adjustments to the voice reduction and isolation area. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now, within Audacity, it is possible to blend in the end of one track with the beginning of another track. And you can do that with an effect called crossfading. What we're going to do is we're going to drag this clip we're going to use the hand and we're going to pull it to the point where we're going to want to blend the two clips together. And basically when this clip is going to be produced, you're going to hear the end of one clip as the other one actually begins. And in order to do this, what we're first going to do is we're going to choose the region in the first clip. And we're then going to go to the effects area. 
what we're then going to do is we're going to fade in this first clip. And so we're going to click to fade in and you're going to see that the waveform is going to change. What we're now going to do is we're going to go to the bottom clip. We're going to highlight that one. What we're then going to do is we're going to go to the effects area and we're then going to fade out that clip. And you're going to see then that the waveform is going to change. So basically, as this clip fades out, you're going to see this one at the top actually fade in. And we can do the same effect by using crossfade. And we can do that by making sure that both clips are going to be on the same timeline. So we're going to drag this clip to the timeline. What we're basically going to do is we're going to highlight the areas that we want to be crossfaded. And so we're going to click in and we're going to select the region that we want to be crossfaded. We're then going to go to the effects area. We're then going to go to this area that says crossfade clips. We're then going to choose the plugin area. And what's going to happen is you'll notice now that we've made one clip and you'll see that the waveform is going to change so that the clips are going to be blended together and there's going to be a fade out and fade in within both clips. So you can work with either clip either way in order to do a crossfade for your audio. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. If you have a long audio that you need to edit, one of the things you can do is you can change the speed of the clip and how it plays so that you can listen to it faster as you edit. Assuming that you are editing in real time, and you are editing with a playback speed of 100, that means then that the clip, as you edit, is playing at its regular speed. What you can do is you can highlight the entire clip. What you can then do is you can speed up the clip so that it plays faster as you edit. So what you can do here is you can speed up the clip. And when you speed up the clip, you're going to use this play button in order to play the clip at a faster pace than you would at 100%. In order to stop the clip, you'll operate the controls here on the left side. But every time that you want to play at the faster speed, you're going to pick this button in order to play the actual clip. When you're ready to begin listening to the clip again in real time, you can move the clip back to 100%. Now this does not change the effect of the actual clip or the audio. If you use any of the effect commands and you were to use change speed or change tempo, that's going to change the nature of the clip. However, playing the clip at a faster pace does not change the clip and allows you to listen and edit faster. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now it's possible that once you've recorded audio that you discover that there is a portion that you don't like or that you have made a mistake. And you're going to want to then re-record in the same area where you made the mistake. And you can do that within Audacity. In order to do that, what you're going to do is you're going to find the place where your mistake is. And you can highlight that area on the track where you made the mistake or where the audio isn't quite what you want it to be. What you can then do is to go to your toolbar and you can then click the silence audio area. What you're then going to see is that that part of the audio then goes away. What you can then do is add a new track and you're going to click add stereo track or if it's the case where you want a mono track you can add one. What you're then going to do is you're going to place your cursor where you're going to create the new audio. And what you're then going to do is you're going to click on the record button and you're going to begin recording your new audio. And what you'll notice then on the timeline is that you are recording audio that will fit the new area where you are then creating your content. And this new content will be a substitute. And once you've completed recording the clip, you'll then need to stop the audio and you'll see on the second track that you're going to have the new clip. What you're then going to do is you're going to save this as a new project. Audacity will then save the new audio and you'll then have a new audio project. What you can then do is to create the new audio file. You will then go to your export command. You will then export as an MP3 if that's the file designation you want. We're going to click export MP3. We're going to save the new project file. 
we're going to save the new mp3 file. Audacity will then tell us that we're going to have one file and that all of the tracks will be combined into one. We're then going to click OK. You'll then see the metadata request. We're going to click OK. And then Audacity will then create the file. And what you've now done is you have now recorded over an area on an audio and you've added this edit to create a new project file. Okay, so with that, thanks and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. And in some cases, what you may want to do to assist you in the editing process is to export each track separately. And you can do that inside of Audacity. What you're going to do is to go to this file area. What you're then going to do is go to the export command. You are then going to see export multiple. We're going to click that area. You can then choose a specific folder. Once you've done that, you're going to determine the format that you want for the multiple clips. We're going to use MP3. And we're going to split the files based on tracks. And in this case, we can determine we can use the track name for each clip. And basically what we're going to do now is we're going to use the export command and we're then going to be exporting all three clips. We're then going to click OK. We're going to click OK again for the second track. And then we're going to click OK again for the third track. Audacity will then create the three tracks. And then you're then going to see all three tracks exported separately into the directory that we determined. And so basically what we've done is we've exported all three clips so that we could analyze them separately. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now, one thing that we can do in Audacity is we can change the speed of the clip. Typically, when you change the speed of the clip, you also change the audio itself. Now, there are some ways to mitigate that within Audacity. For example, what we can do is we can go to this effect area, and what we can then do is to use the change speed effect. You're going to then see a dialog box. Changing the speed of your clip is designed primarily to keep the waveform intact. So even as we make changes, you're going to notice primarily that the waveform pretty much stays the same. What we're now going to do is we're going to go back. We're going to undo the change speed. What we're going to do this time is we're going to go to the effect area. And we're going to change the tempo. When we change a tempo, you're going to see the waveform change but what we're trying to do is to keep the pitch steady in our recording. So when we make a change, we we'll click OK, you are going to notice that the waveform is going to change again. But the idea here is for the pitch to be primarily intact. What we're now going to do is we're going to undo our change. It's possible that what we may want to do is to slow our audio clip down. If that's the case, we're going to go to the effect area. What we're then going to do is use pause stretch we can then determine what our stretch factor is going to be. Now, as is the case with other changes, we can preview the clip by clicking on this preview button and we can then click OK. When we're ready to produce the recording, we can click this manage button and we can export the recording. We want to find out what this is going to sound like, we can click the preview button. What we can then do is click OK. But then Audacity is going to process the new file you're going to notice some changes to the waveform once Audacity completes its process. And you're going to notice now that the waveform actually stretches. So if you need to stretch audio in order to fit a file or to fit a video, or you need to speed up that clip, you can do that by using either the effect that's pause stretch, changing the speed, or changing the tempo. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I'll see you either in another video or in another course.